Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint. Hello viewers, welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. I've just chosen this one for this demonstration. Late autumn kind of scene with a stormy sky and I'm just leaving a thin film of water on here. I'll give you a quick run round of the palette colours we're using today. For this one, raw sienna, citrus yellow, freshwater blue. These are all Turner's paints, so this is like a powder blue. Cobalt blue, burnt sienna with a touch of crimson in. Cobalt blue, French ultramarine and burnt sienna with a touch of crimson in. Burnt umber, French ultramarine, light red. I decided to use a mixed green for this as well, that's what you get from the tube and this is called moss green and with that we'll get started. I'll use a mop brush I think. Just a tiny touch of raw sienna there I think. I've not been producing videos uh, once a week at the moment because I had an accident and torn the scapular muscles in my back which has locked the whole of my back up. So I've got the raw sienna in, and I'm just dropping in the fresh water blue and burnt sienna and I'm just scuffling it in. With it being a blue, I won't rub it into the raw sienna because I don't want green. I'm going to take a coin wrapped in some kitchen towel. Just take out a little bit of sun. Just adding this in different strengths just to at the variation in the wash so you'll have to forgive me if I've not been able to produce as many videos as I would have liked this is the citrus yellow bring a little bit into these bushes here and I just to keep the water area dry as we'll be putting a farm truck in here with puddles in and you know the churned up mud that you can get from the tractor tires. I'm going to bring some slight strokes of raw sienna into this back field. The lighter colour is just to help draw your eye in through the painting. I'm just going to drop some weak raw sienna in there a little in here. I'm not putting the clouds in yet because the sky is just a little too wet and I don't want them to explode everywhere. I'm going to bring up a little bit of the moss green. It's quite weak that. Add a little bit of that yellow to it. Almost like a, a green gold. stronger with the moss green parts. I'll take a little light red. Just work some of this in. Just a few gentle strokes. Taking the damp brush and then I'm just going to fuzz the sharp edge up on the sun. I'm going to take my mop brush once again, squeeze the water out of it. I'm just going to drop this in. some nice interesting shapes. And then we're just going to leave this to dry. Okay, first stage of your sky is nice and dry. I've re-wet the background hills and I'm just going to take some of the cobalt blue with burnt sienna and a little bit of crimson added to it and I'm just going to drop it in here and add a little bit more burnt umber and just to 
darken it. And I'm just going to drop this along the top. Just allowing it to drift down through the water, just pulling it down in places, leaving light, dark areas for the background hills. We will be putting some darker clouds in uh, in the sky, but I don't want to do it all in one go because I don't want the paint to mix. I want to try and keep some of the colours separated. I don't want to spend too much time on these hills, they're just background. A bit paler towards the where the tree is so that when I put the tree in it will stand out. Taking some of the blue, I'm just going to put some water in the farm track puddles, just adding water to that. Taking some of the original sky colour, cloud colour, cobalt blue burnt sienna with a touch of crimson in it. Just adding one or two darker areas into the water, almost like reflections or shadow just helps give the puddle a bit of depth. You can always strengthen this up later should it be needed, but we'll see how it goes. Real dark now, just mixing a few of the colours together. Just added the French Ultramarine with a touch of cobalt blue, burnt umber and crimson. Only a touch of crimson. soaking wet and where the sun is I want to put a light streak down through this just using a damp brush and make it slightly wider than I need it that way should it backfill you will still end up with a, a light streak in it and then I want to lie this flat and then let it dry now that's dry I just want to take some raw sienna on an old hog hair brush used for oil painting. I'm just going to put the tops in. Making them light and airy, not hairy. And on the, just where the sun would be catching it slightly. few things at once. I'm going to take some light red and mix it with the colour we had in here just to make um, sort of a, a ready brown. And this is a filbert brush and I want to start to bring in some of the divots and roots that you get from tractors. I think I totally think this is a, this is a filbert brush. up. 
almost like sculpting mud. Take a little damp brush and just soften some of this in. Taking it into the grass. Just teasing little bits of areas out. Making it all come together and shaping it as a goal to create some high and low points. Slowly bringing the mud together. Taking the edges into the grass and just losing them. Just letting it disappear into the field. Dropping in one or two bits of extra, very dark at the bottom. Just to give it more dimension. Creating more depth. Trying not to get carried away. And that's one way to put mud on your track. Now, I'm going to move on to the tree. I'd like to bring some of the green back here and I'm going to put some in the middle. A little bit of water with that. Add some burnt umber to it. A real darky green. Just a little bit of water to the tree. I'm still waiting for this to dry so we can put this in. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of white red up there I think. Taking some of the colour we've just made. And because it's an oak tree, they have a, a very irregular barky shape on the outside, a very gnarly. So I'm just putting this unevenly around the tree so there's no straight lines if we can get away with it. Just let this mingle with the light red. it in one line. Then once again I'm going to take some of the mud colour, the very dark bit. Just drop this in. Not everywhere because I do want some of the colours to show through. and then I'm going to let that dry. Now that that's perfectly dry, I want to come back to the sky to finish that off and with the next layer of colour on it. So I'm going to re-wet it all. I'm going to start from the middle and pull the water outwards. Just re-wetting it all really. And the reason why I'm starting from the middle and pulling it outwards is that the paler colour of the blue, I don't want the other darker colour running into it. I'll bring it down over the hills there up against this tree. I want the other colour to lie on top of the colours below it without disturbing the colour underneath. So I'm going back to my cobalt blue French ultramarine with some burnt sienna added to it and just a tiny bit of crimson and we can begin just checking the strength of this. You have plenty of time to do this, it's not, uh, you won't be in a great rush. Bring it down towards the hills, adding a little bit of water. Soften it down towards the bottom of these trees. Always remember to leave some of your other colour showing through. Water once again, I'm just softening the areas in that I want to 
I'll move it a little bit, going it down over this hill. And I want to add a little bit more burnt umber to that, just to get a nice dark, stormy colour. Just add little bits of this in. Try not to disturb the paint underneath. This will help bring your eye into the picture. I don't want too much of this dark in it. And then I'm just going to set this at a slight angle to allow things to run. And then we're going to let that dry. Okay, your sky is nice and dry. I think you'll agree with me, that's a beautiful looking sky. Any landscape. I've just mixed up some French Ultramarine burnt umber almost into a, an inky black. And I'm going to come back to the tree. And let's add some branches in. Making these kind of jerky like you find them on oak trees. You can decide how many branches you put on. I'm just going to turn the picture around as we do this. I'll fill this tree in and then I'll join you when it's done but you get the impression of how it's done. Do one more. Bring some of these twigs that you can normally find on them on the trunk. And I'll finish this tree off and I'll be back shortly. Hopefully you've got your branches on your trees looking something like that. And I've just put a, a few fence posts in and, and a couple of more bushes that were there just with the rigger brush. And I want to take some light red now on my oil painting brush, just drop some autumn leaves on the tops of these bushes. Maybe a few on this oak tree. Don't put too much paint on the brush because you want these to be airy, not hairy. some into these bushes here. I do want a little bit of greenery left on these, this hedgerow kind of thing. Moss green and I'm going to deepen it with some of that colour, just to darken it, brown it a little, Get very thick earthy green. some of the dark, I'm not even going to clean the brush. French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber right in the bottom. It's going to add some deeper shadows. It's beginning to make a little bit dark in this end up here. Just stop you coming out of the picture. Same on this side. a little bit of this down in that palette there. When it comes to this back row of trees, taking most of the paint off the brush, and use the side of the brush and drag it down. Just create some background trees here. It's only an impression. In it, just using the colours on the palette, anything that's dark but not too thick. Take my little brush once again, maybe there's a hedge from bushes here in the back, just an impression. Take a damp brush, soften off the bottoms of these, bringing it into the grass. And 
some more green to this so I'm sort of lighten it slightly bring it to here just scrumpling this in leaving some light patches in as well tucking it into the damp paper which just helps to soften things take a damp brush just soften some of these edges off a little bit darker in the corners suggesting a slope brush once again just pulling one or two strands of straw and grass work in the mud not much to do now burnt umber and French ultramarine once again and I'm just adding a little bit of texture to this oak tree you, just a dry brush effect on it and then what I'd like to do is just a couple of these but not many taking some white paint watercolor white paint this is the Magello white mission gold I just want to pick out one or two areas in the cloud where the sun might catch it just to help pull your eye just a little closer in so just a little bit there as well don't have it everywhere if you decide to do this it's up to you I don't really want to do too much more to this and I don't think I want to put any more on that it's just a tiny tiny highlight and maybe there's a few birds in the sky just to finish it off I think we'll have them here white paint for this one this is where you get around to the end of your painting where you get to sign it mount it and frame it i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please leave a comment comments are always welcome it's always nice to hear from viewers i'll see you next time thank you very much for watching thank you